Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to our Bible in a Year reading plan. I am Shanique, and we are so excited that you're here. This year, we are reading from Genesis to Revelation in a year. And the reading plan that we're currently using, you can find a link to that in the description box below if you'd like to join us. And if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, or maybe you're a returning listener, if you haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you just to hit that notification bell and subscribe, so that way you'll be notified whenever we release a new video. Okay, so today on day 25, we'll be reading from Exodus, Exodus chapter 31 to 34, and we'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. All right, let's get started. Exodus 31. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and all kinds of craftsmanship, to create artistic designs for work in gold, in silver, and in bronze, and in the cutting of stones for settings, and in the carving of wood, so that he may work in all kinds of craftsmanship. And behold, I myself have appointed with him Oholiab, the son of Ahisamak of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all who are skillful, I have put skill, so that they may make everything that I have commanded you. The tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the atoning cover that is on it, and all the furniture of the tent, the table and its utensils, the pure gold, the lampstand with all its utensils, and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand, the woven garments as well, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons with which to carry out their priesthood, the anointing oil also, and the fragrant incense for the holy place they are to make them according to everything that I have commanded you. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Now as for you, speak to the sons of Israel, saying, You must keep my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, so that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Therefore you are to keep the Sabbath, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it must be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath, they must be put to death. So the sons of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to celebrate the Sabbath throughout their generations as a permanent covenant. It is a sign between me and the sons of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he ceased from labor and was refreshed. When he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of a testimony, tablets of stone, written by the finger of God. Exodus 32 Now when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people assembled around Aaron and said to him, Come! Make us a God who will go before us. For this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what happened to him. Aaron said to them, Tear off the gold rings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people tore off the gold rings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. Then he took the gold from their hands and fashioned it with an engraving tool and made it into a cast metal calf. And they said, This, and said, this is your God, Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Now when Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. So the next day they got up early and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and got up to engage in lewd behavior. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Go down at once, for your people whom you have brought up from the land of Egypt have behaved corruptly. They have quickly turned aside from the way which I commanded them. They have made for themselves a cast metal calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, they are an obstinate people. So now leave me alone that I might have so that my anger may burn against them, and that I may destroy them and make of you a great nation. 
Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your anger burn against your people whom you have brought out from the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should Egyptians talk, saying, with evil motives he brought them out to kill them on the mountains and to destroy them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent of doing harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants to whom you swore by yourself and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens, and all this land of which I have spoken I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented of the harm which he said he would do to his people. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of a testimony in his hand, tablets which were written on both sides. They were written on one side and the other. The tablets were God's work, and the writing was God's writing engraved on the tablets. Now when Joshua heard the sound of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There's a sound of war in the camp. But he said, It's not the sound of the cry of victory, nor is it the sound of a cry of defeat, but I hear the sound of singing. And came about as soon as Moses, Moses approached the camp, that he saw the calf and the people dances, dancing, and Moses' anger burnt, and he threw the tablets from his hands and shattered them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf which they had made and completely burnt it with fire and ground it to powder and scattered it over the surface of the water and made the sons of Israel drink it. Then Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought such a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord burn. You know the people yourself that they are prone to evil. For they said to me, Make a God for us who will go before us. For this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what happened to him. So I said to them, Whoever has any gold, let them tear it off. Then they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Now when Moses saw that the people were out of control, for Aaron had let them get out of control to the point of being an object of ridicule among their enemies, Moses then stood at the gate of the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered together to him. And he said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Every man of you put his sword on his thigh and go back and forth from the gate, from gate to gate in the camp and kill every man his brother and every man his friend and every man his neighbor. So the sons of Levi did as Moses instructed, and about 3,000 men of the people fell that day. Then Moses said, Dedicate yourselves together today to the Lord, for every man has been against his son, against his brother, in order that he may bestow a blessing upon you today. And on the next day, Moses said to the people, You yourselves have committed a great sin, and now I'm going up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, this people has committed a great sin, and they have made a god of gold for themselves. But now, if you will forgive their sin very well, but if not, please wipe me out from your book, which you have written. However, the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will wipe him out of my book. But go now, lead the people where I told you before. I told you, behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, on the day when I punish, I will punish them for their sin. The Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf which Aaron had made. Exodus 33. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Depart, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought up from the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it, and I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in your midst, because you are an obstinate people, and I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard this sad word, they went into mourning, and none of them put on his jewelry. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the sons of Israel, You are an obstinate people. If I were to go up in your midst for just one moment, I would destroy you. So now, take off your jewelry, that I may know what I shall do to you. So the sons of Israel stripped themselves of their jewelry from the Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, a good distance from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp, and came about 
whenever Moses went out to the tent, as all the people would arise and stand, each at the entrance of his tent, and gaze after Moses until he entered the tent. Whenever Moses entered the tent, the pillow of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillow of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would stand and worship each at the tent at the entrance of his tent. So the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses returned to the camp, his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man who would not depart from the tent. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up the people, but you yourself have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now then, if I have found favor in your sight in any way, please let me know your ways so that I may know you in order that I may find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. For how then can we, can it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people, is it not by your going with us so that we and I and your people may be distinguished from all the other people who are on the face of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I have known you by name. Then Moses said, Please, show me your glory. And he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and I will be gracious to you, gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show compassion to whom I will show compassion. He further said, You cannot see my face. For mankind shall not see me and live. Then the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand there on the rock, and it will come about while my glory is passing by, and I will put you in the cliff of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Exodus 34. Now the Lord said to Moses, cut out for yourself two stone tablets like the former ones, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets which you smashed. So be ready by morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. And no one is to come up with you, nor let anyone be seen anywhere on the mountain. Even the flocks and the herds are not to graze in the front of that mountain. So he cut out two stone tablets like the former ones, and Moses got up early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And he took the two stone tablets in his hand. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him as he called upon the name of the Lord. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate, merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in faithfulness and truth, who keeps faithfulness for thousands, who forgives wrongdoing, violation of his law, and sin. Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, inflicting the punishment of the fathers on the children, unto the grandchildren, to the third and fourth generations. And Moses hurried to bow low toward the ground and worship. Then he said, If in any way I have found favor in your sight, Lord, Please, may the Lord go along in our midst, even though the people are so obstinate, and pardon our wrongdoing and our sin, and take us as your own possession. Then God said, Behold, I am going to make a covenant before all your people. I will perform miracles which have not been produced in all the earth, nor among any of the nations, and all the people among whom you live will see the working of the Lord, for it is a fearful thing that I am going to perform with you. Be sure to comply with what I am commanding you this day. Behold, I am going to drive out the Amorite from you, and the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Be careful that you do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land into which you are going, or it will become a snare in your midst. But rather, you are to tear down their altars, and smash their memorial stones, and cut down their Asherim. For you shall not worship any other God, because the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Otherwise, you might make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they would prostitute themselves with their gods and sacrifice to their gods, and someone might invite you to eat of his sacrifice. And you might take some of his 
some of his daughters for your sons, and his daughters might prostitute themselves with their gods, and cause your sons also to prostitute themselves with their gods. You shall not make for yourself any gods cast in metal. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. For seven days you are to eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you at the appointed time in the month of Abib. For in the month of Abib you came out of Egypt. The firstborn from every womb belongs to me, and all your male livestock, the firstborn from cattle and sheep, you shall redeem with a lamb, the firstborn from a donkey. And if you do not redeem it, then you shall break its neck." You shall redeem all the firstborn of your sons. None are to appear before me empty-handed. You shall work six days, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Even during plowing time and harvest you shall rest. And you shall celebrate the feast of weeks, that is, the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year all your males are to appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel, for I will drive out nations from you and enlarge your borders, and no one will covet your land when you go up three times a year to appear before the Lord your God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor is the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover to be left over until morning. You shall bring the very first of the first fruits of your soil into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. And the Lord said to Moses, Write down these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord for forty days and forty nights. He did not eat bread or drink water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came about when Moses was coming down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand as he was coming down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because of speaking with him. So when Aaron and all the sons of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to approach him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers in the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke to them. Afterward, all the sons of Israel came near, and he commanded them to do everything that the Lord had spoken to him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off the veil until he came out. And whenever he came out and spoke to the sons of Israel what he had been commanded, the sons of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. So Moses would put the veil back on his face until he went in to speak with him. Okay, that is our reading for today. Now, throughout these pages of scripture, we get a glimpse of God and his people. On the mountaintop, the Lord was speaking to Moses about the need for Sabbath rest. Now, while at the base of the mountain, the people and Aaron, they were building a golden calf. The people, they did not trust the Lord despite all that he had done for them. Instead, they wanted to worship a God of their creation, a God that they could see. And they did not want to wait on the Lord. They wanted something in front of their eyes that they could worship. And Aaron, he should have known better, but he went along with their plan. And then he tried to shift the blame for his sin onto others. Now, it's easy to look at this scenario and be disgusted by their actions. But when we look at our own hearts, we know that there are times we want God to do things the way that we want them done. We want him to do what we think is best. And like Aaron, we are quick to shift the blame of our sin to those around us. Yet God is loving and he's patient with us and he's always seeking to bring us back to himself. Okay, that is our reading for today on day number 25 in our Bible Night Year reading plan. I hope you'll join us tomorrow for day number 26.